I hope you enjoyed our little jello <laughs> debacle. You never know what material that my family is going to provide on any given week. And so I, I welcome you into the space where we are going to share some scripture and some thoughts that God has placed on my heart. And as this is the beginning of the holiest week of the year, what people often call Passion Week, I am reading the, the scripture that is on the Revised Common Lectionary for today. It is out of the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 21, verses 1 through 11. When they had come near Jerusalem and had reached Bethphage at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two disciples, saying to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately you will find a donkey tied and a colt with her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, just say this, the Lord needs them, and he will send them immediately. They took, this took place to fulfill what had been spoken through the prophet, saying, Tell the daughter of Zion, Look, your king is coming to you humble and mounted on a donkey, and on a colt, the foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had directed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and put their cloaks on them, and he sat on them. A very large crowd spread their cloaks on the road, and others cut branches from the trees and spread them on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and that followed were shouting, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When he entered Jerusalem, the whole city was in turmoil, asking, who is this? The crowds were saying, this is the prophet Jesus from Nazareth in Galilee. May God bless these words of scripture to our understanding. So this is not our typical Palm Sunday. You know, normally we gather at our churches and we're waving palms and we're shouting Hosanna and saying, Jesus is King. There's a lot of excitement and energy. And we had plans of having a modified Palm Sunday, a driving Palm Parade. I saw this idea on Facebook and I knew it could work. I mean, I have a minor in microbiology. I understand viral disease transmission. I have been trained in sterile technique. And so I know how to keep viruses and bacteria from spreading from place to place. And I discussed it with my churches and at the one church, my wise person who orders the palms, Diane, she had called thinking ahead and backed off our palm order because she wasn't certain if we were going to have Palm Sunday. And I said, no, no, we're gonna have a celebration. This is gonna be great. I expect all kinds of people are going to come. And so put it back to the regular order. And so she did as I requested. And I contacted a person more talented in graphic design than I. Thank you, Allie. And she put together a cool graphic with all the information that everybody needed, including the very important, no one will be allowed to get out of their cars. And so we excitedly rolled it out. Or did I have a sense of trepidation? And so every day I continued to watch Governor Burgum. I call it my date with Doug. And Doug gives us the, the details, the data of what's going on. And I thought if he orders a shelter in place, 
well, then I'll know that we can't have our driving palm parade. But Governor Burgum didn't do that. And our numbers didn't exponentially grow. Yet, and President Trump told us that the CDC was recommending that if we went out in public, we should be wearing a cloth mask. And his trusted advisor, Dr. Fauci, mentioned that 39 states have shelter in place orders and he doesn't know why the other 11, which includes North Dakota, why we don't have shelter in place orders. So I sought out trusted counsel, which included my husband, Kent. And he said, well, you know, this asking people to come out and participate in this parade doesn't really match what you've been asking them in your pajama talks with Pastor Jeannie. He said, I was actually kind of surprised that you would be doing this. And so what was I doing? Doubt nagged at me. And then that ugly monster of pride reared its ugly head because I didn't want to confess that I hadn't truly prayed it through. And now I was embarrassed because the church had spent more money because I confidently told Diane, up the order, we're going to celebrate. Plus I knew it was going to dis disappoint some people that were really looking forward to it. So this morning, or I should say yesterday morning, I am filming this ad, I got up to have some quiet time to pray. And I knew what I should do. But it still took me a while. It still took me a few more people to consult with. And then it came to me that I didn't really understand Palm Sunday. Now we read in the, the gospel passage that Jesus sent his disciples ahead of him to prepare the way, to get the donkey and the colt, which it's interesting that the donkey and the colt were mentioned in this gospel, where in the other three gospels, this, the colt is not mentioned, only the donkey. And Matthew quotes more scripture than any of the other gospel writers. And this would be in reference to the prophecy in Zechariah chapter 9, verses 9 through 10, where it talks about a donkey and a colt. And the way the scripture reads, it says Jesus rode them. <laughs> so I don't know how he worked that out. I mean, back before the trainers at SeaWorld couldn't ride dolphins, I saw shows where they would stand one foot on the back of each dolphin and ride. And maybe that's kind of what Jesus did on this donkey and this colt. I don't really know. But the key part is that people prepared the way for Jesus to come. They went before Jesus. And they wanted to make a nice path for this person that they knew to be their Messiah to come into town on. So they waved these branches in celebration and they laid the branches and even their very coats on the path ahead of Jesus because they knew just how important Jesus was. And as he came, they shouted, Hosanna, which we shout as a form of praise. And yet, the word Hosanna means save us. Save us. The people were pleading with Jesus to save them. Now, the Messiah they were expecting to take on the Roman government, they expected to be riding in on a war horse 
because there was going to be a big battle ahead. And yet here came Jesus riding peacefully in on a lowly donkey. Now a donkey was a symbol of peace. So Jesus came in peacefully, not riding a war horse. And a donkey was also a beast of burden. So that's symbolic because Jesus, the reason he came was to take our burden of sin and death and to take it with him to the cross and to die on the cross and to defeat sin and death and rise again so that we do not need to have fear, that we have promise of an eternity in heaven. So what is the message of Palm Sunday? Well, I think it's partly that we need to put down our pride and prepare the way for Jesus. We need to prepare the way so that our neighbors, our friends, our coworkers, our family are open and receptive to the message when Jesus comes to meet them. And we need to lay down our self-sufficiency. Isn't that kind of what we're struggling with at this time? And I think we can even allow the grief, the fear, and the anxiety that we're feeling to come while shouting to Jesus, Hosanna, save us. And we can cast those burdens off of us because Jesus bears them for us. So instead of the palm parade that we typically have, where we have little kids waving the palms and they're wearing cute clothes and everybody's all excited and we're thrilled to see each other. And maybe even the pastor is showing off because she's kind of a science nerd. Let's wave whatever we have as we shout, Hosanna, Hosanna, Jesus, save us. And this service is a little different because our driving palm parade was going to be our service today, but I will be posting a playlist of music that might be something that you would enjoy on this Palm Sunday. And so today, please receive this blessing. People of God, you are chosen. You are beloved. Jesus came riding into town on that donkey for you. And so raise your hands in praise and shout, Jesus, save us. Amen.